We will now speak about uh, max-min strategies. These make uh, particular sense in the context of uh, zero-sum games, but actually are applicable quite uh, to, to all games. What is a max-min strategy? It's simply put a player's strategy that maximizes their payoff, assuming the other player uh, is out to get them. Uh, we will uh, def we will concentrate primarily on the two player case here again because when we get to zero sum games they, those really make only sense in the case of two players. Um, but keep in mind that one could define this kind of more generally uh, when we speak about uh, max min strategy. So the uh, max min strategy is a strategy that m uh, maximizes my worst case uh, outcome and my maximum value or safety level is that payoff that's guaranteed by the uh, maximum strategy. And here it is defined uh, formally. The maximum strategy for player I is the strategy S1 that maximizes the minimum that the other player, remember that minus I is the player other than I, would uh, hold um, a player one down to. And the maximum value is defined similarly to the, be the value of that maximum strategy. Now, why, why would we want to think about the maximum strategy? Um, one can think of it either uh, as a um, simply a sort of a certain cautionary Maybe uh, the other people will make some mistakes and not act in their own best interest. Uh, maybe I'm not sure exactly what their payoffs are. There are a lot of interpretations. Or you can simply be uh, paranoid uh, about, um, about, about them and think that they're out to get you. And you know the, you know the saying, you know, uh, even the uh, paranoid have uh, enemies. That's the max min strategy. And just to confuse things, we'll also speak about the min-max strategy. The min-max strategy is strategy against, if you wish, the other player in the two-player game, is a strategy that minimizes their payoff on the assumption that they're trying to maximize it. And so here is the formal definition. The min-max strategy for player I is playing against the other guy, which we know by minus I is the strategy that minimizes the maximum payoff as uh, attempted by the other guy of the payoff to the other guy. And the min-max value is simply the value of that min-max strategy. The value to player one. Now, why, uh, why would uh, player one uh, want to, um, want to har harm the other guy? Well, um, you could, you could, just be out to get him. That, that's a possibility. Or they could be playing a zero-sum game. And in a zero-sum game, uh, hurting the other guy is tantamount to uh, improving your own, uh, your own payoff. And so um, in, in the setting of zero-sum games, uh, max-min and min-max strategies make a lot of sense. And in fact, in a very famous theorem due to Jean van Neumann, um, it will prove that uh, in a zero-sum game, by definition, we consider only two-player uh, such games, any Nash equilibrium, the player receives a payoff that is equal to both his max-min value and his min-max value. And, um, and that means that, uh, so we, we'll call that the value of the game, the value for player one is called the value of the game, and uh, that means that the the set of maximum strategies are really the same as set of the min max strategies. That is, trying to improve your worst case situation is the same as trying to minimize the other guy's best case situation. And any ma maximum strategy profile or min max strategy profile, because they're the same, uh, constitute a Nash equilibrium. And furthermore, those are all the Nash equilibria that exist. And so the payoff in all natural equilibria is the same, namely the value of the game. One way to get a concrete feel for it is graphically, and here's the game of matching pennies. This is a game where uh, you, each of us chooses heads and tails with some probability. And uh, 
if we uh, uh, if it comes up uh, either if we if both if if if, if if the result of our randomization, uh, I end up choosing head, and you you end up playing tail, you win, and and, and vice versa. Also, if I chose tail and you head, but if we both chose a head or both chose tail, I win. And so here are the payoffs. Uh, you see here the strategy spaces. Uh, this is player two uh, is kind of increasing their probability of playing heads, and this is uh, player one. And on this dimension you have the value of the game, the payoff to uh, pay one. And the only natural equilibrium uh, is for both to randomize 50-50. It's just right here. It's conveniently kind of looked by slicing uh, the, uh, the, uh, the three-dimensional uh, structure uh, in this way. And you sort of see that uh, it, it's got to be an equilibrium in the sense that Player, player one could be moving along uh, this uh, this curve, but if as he does it, his payoffs would only drop. And so he's trying to maximize the value. He wouldn't do it. And conversely, player two can only traverse around along this. But if he does that, the payoffs would only increase. And he's trying to minimize the value. So um, so uh, you get a a stable point, which is which for obvious reasons is called a saddle point. So although there are general purpose procedures for finding a Nash equilibrium, in particular in uh, in two by two games, uh, we can use the um, the max min uh, definition uh, to to find it uh, directly in zero sum games. And uh, let's see how it uh, how it happens in the uh, game we'll call the uh, the penalty kick game. So in this game we have a um, a uh, a uh, penalty kicker and a goalie. Uh, it's a zero sum game, and the goal of the uh, uh, kicker is to score a goal, and the goal the goal of the goalie is to uh, prevent it. And uh, let's assume that they each have two strategies: kick to the left and kick to the right for the uh, kicker, and jump to the left and jump to the right. For the goalie. Um, the payoffs will be the, uh, each of those will determine a probability of uh, the, uh, the kicker scoring a goal and will have that probability being the payoff, the value of the game, that is the payoff to uh, player one and therefore minus the uh, payoff to the player two, namely the goalie. And so here they are. So for example, if the kicker kicks left and the goalie guesses correctly and jump left also, then the goalie has not too bad a chance of stopping the shot, namely uh, probability 0.4. If he jumps to the wrong side, his probability of stopping it uh, is much lower, it's 0.2. Similarly, uh, if the uh, kicker decides to kick to the right, if the um, goalie uh, guesses wrong, his probability is low, even lower than if he guesses wrong in the other case. And if he guesses right, his probability is higher, although not quite as high as that had he guessed right in the uh, left case. So he's, he's better at uh, stopping uh, shots when the kicker kicks to the left. So how does the kicker uh, maximize his minimum? That's what we're after. So here is the expression, right? Uh, we want the max min value of the following. So they each have some mixed strategy of playing left and right with some probability. So S1L is a probability that the kicker kicks to the left, and S2L is a probability that the goalie jumps to the left. And as we saw, in that case, the value is 0.6. And similarly, uh, the value of 0.8 is in, if, they, if we end up in this situation, 0.9 and 0.7 in these situations. Okay, so this is the expression uh, that we somehow uh, need to compute. So, what is the minimum that the kicker should keep in mind? So. The kicker says, I'm going to pick, I'm going to play my strategy S1. 
whatever it is. When I play it, player 2 is going to play S2 so as to minimize my payoff. So let me write down this entire expression. And I'm just, uh, this is simply copying it over, replacing um, S, uh, expressions such as S1R by 1 minus S1L. Uh, that's all it's doing. And the same, same for uh, uh, S2R. Uh, and so we have, um, uh, this is our expression, and player 1 is saying to himself, what would player 2 do if I were to play my strategy S1? And uh, this is simply rearranging the terms, nothing else going on here, as a function of S2L. Because player 1 says, I'm going to put, I'm going to pick S1. What would S2 be best response, namely its minimum? And so this is arranging it as a function of S2 strategy. And now all that remained is to look uh, for the minimum of the strategy. And the minimum is uh, taken by uh, look, taking the first derivative with respect to S2, holding S1 as a constant. And so we have this expression. And then we solve for um, for S1, and we get that S1 of L is, is, is a half. And therefore, S1 of R is a half as well. And so by this uh, maximum calculation, we see that uh, player, the kicker, figures out that in equilibrium, uh, they'd better randomize half-half between left and right. What does, uh, what does the uh, goalie uh, kind of uh, figure out? Well, he's trying to minimize the kicker's maximum, right? That's one way to look at it. He's doing the min-max strategy. And so here is the min-max strategy for player two. Just writing it down. And as before, we'll simply, um, we'll simply um, rewrite uh, S1 of R as 1 minus S1 of L and so on for uh, S2 of R. And we'll rearrange the term, this time as a function of S1 of, S1 of L, because um, player 2 is saying, uh, player, player 1, player 2 says, player 1 is whatever I choose, namely S2, player 1 will want to best respond, namely to maximize. So let me write it down as a function of S1's choice, and now figure out what the maximum would be. Well, here's the maximum, and uh, when you solve for L2 now, you get that uh, the randomization in equilibrium for, uh, for S2 is, uh, for player 2 is a quarter and three quarters. So this illustrates how we can use the uh, maximum theorem to actually compute uh, the, um, uh, the uh, Nash equilibrium in zero-sum games, at least in two-by-two two games. In general, we can use the uh, min-max theorem to compute the uh, equilibria of uh, zero-sum game, and we do it by simply laying out uh, a linear program that captures the game. And here it is. So u1 star is going to be the value of the game, that is, uh, the payoff to uh, player 1 in equilibrium. And so we're going to specify from player's 2 point of view. We could have done it the other way around also. So what player 2 is saying is simply, says, for each of the actions of uh, player one, each action that player one might consider, I want to find a mixed strategy S2. So here's my mixed strategy S2. It will look at, at all my pure strategies K and make sure that the probability, that's the probability distribution over those. Some say sum to one and they're non-negative. So what I'd like to do is that the best response to my strategy by player one for any of these actions will never exceed this value of the game because I'm trying to minimize it. So I'm going to find the lowest u that has a property 
that player one doesn't have a profitable deviation by any of his uh, of his um, uh, of his pure strategies. So when I look at the payoff for uh, player two, when I play a2k and he plays a1j, that would that j that I'm considering right now, and I multiply the probability of in my mixed strategy playing a2k, I want I don't want uh, that player one uh, that other player player one to have a profitable deviation. So it's got to be that his expected payoff will be no greater than the uh, value of u1 star. So uh, clearly this is a correct formulation of the game and it is a linear program. As we know, linear programs are efficiently uh, solvable uh, in theory by a, uh, a uh, interior method that is provably uh, polynomial in practice by procedures uh, that are worst case exponential but in practice work well.